Today is very, very cloudy, and I guess I could say very boring. But you know what else is boring? The Shopify Edition 2025. That is right, a couple days ago, Shopify released the Winter Edition 2025. And I kid you not, they called it the Boring Edition. I mean, take a look at this. Here, the Boring Edition. So for this edition, there are a couple of new updates or features that I'm super excited about. The first one is the theme blocks. It is finally released, so that's pretty cool. The next update that I'm super excited about is the meta object setting. You can finally create an input setting that will allow you to select a meta object or a custom data that you can display in your online store. I think that is pretty cool. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will show you that later in this video. But what about you guys? What is the feature that you are super excited about. Let me know in the comments below. So without further ado, let's take a look at this boring edition and see if it makes us fall asleep. Get it? Because it's boring. So we're finally here in the browser and if you guys want to see this page yourself, of course, I'll put the link in the description below. But yeah, as soon as you get to this page, you will see the most quote-unquote boring edition. And there was also a model earlier, which is the boring TV. They call it boring TV. And I lost that. I don't know how to get back to it and I can't show it now. Oh, there's a TV here. So basically, if you click that, damn. Yeah. So yeah, this boring TV will allow you to go through channels that have relation to the updates. You can see it right here on the right side. I honestly have no idea. From what I can remember, it's just an Easter egg full of AI videos, as you can see. And you can even switch channels. You can move forward and backward. You can adjust the volume and you can go to a page, I guess. Hello there. Pardon the interrupt. So yeah, if you want to see this yourself, we found it. It's at the very bottom of the page. But since we're here at Weekly How, our main focus is the developer updates. So here we have the developer and storefronts. We can just open that. And the first thing here is the theme blocks finally live. So I assume we can finally create theme blocks in our Shopify theme. So if we go back to our online store, we open this and now if we customize say for example the Shopify theme that is currently published if you want to follow along you can do that you can check your themes and open the theme editor and then you can just hover a section and this is going to be add collection which means it's a block for the specific collection section and for this one as well we can add a block but we only have here a caption block. This means that this caption block is part of this image with text section and it can only be used there. So what we want to do next is to create a theme block that we can apply to any section. Okay, how can we do that? We can do that by creating a new theme block in the code editor. So let's open the code editor. And in the structure of our Shopify theme, we should have here a new folder called blocks and we can create a new block and we can just call this demo underscore block. Click done. And then as an output, we can just say, we can create a div and then we can just type hello world. This is a new block. There we go. And for the name, we can just call this demo block. And for the setting, it's all up to you. You can create a new setting here if you want. You can just set it to header. And for its content, we can just say, this is an example header. And then for the info, you can just say, this is an info. There you go. But let's not forget the presets because we need it so that we can select this block in a section. Once we click the add block button, it's not gonna show if there is no preset. So make sure that you add a preset here. And for its name, we can just set it to a demo block, okay? Now let's save this. And now the next thing that we're going to do is to allow our Shopify theme to accept theme blocks. How can we do that? If you guys remembered in a previous video, we have to make sure that our sections can accept theme blocks. So let's say, let's open the custom liquid, this one. And if we notice, there is no block in the schema. So we can just create here a block or blocks. And then we have to make sure that these blocks can accept 
a type of theme as well as a type of app. So that's going to be another object and we have to change this to app, just like that. So now this section can now accept app blocks and theme blocks, okay? So now the next thing we're going to do is to display the content of the theme blocks. How can we do that? Just inside of this div, we can create a new div. We can close that like so. And then we need to use a tag and that's going to be the content for blocks. It's going to be plural, okay? So it should be content for blocks. Now, if we save this, we should be able to add a block in this section. Now, the thing is you have to do all of this in all of your section if you want them to accept theme blocks. That's the only thing you need to do, okay? So now this section should be able to use theme blocks. So if we go back to our theme editor, let's just reload this. And if we use the custom, sorry about that, let's just undo that. If we use the custom liquid section, we should be able to add a new block and we will find here a demo block. But since we also added the app in our schema, we will also be able to add app blocks, as you can see here. So let's use our demo block. You will see here, hello world, this is a new block and we have our header here. Now the next update that I want to cover is the meta object settings. Now if you don't know what are meta objects, meta objects are basically just custom objects or custom data that you can create yourself. I already covered this in the past, so if you haven't watched the meta object video, I will put it right here in the eye icon. So what is this meta object setting? This meta object setting will allow merchants to select a meta object entry or entries through the picker. And then it's up to you what you want to do with that data. Do you want to just display it or do you want to use it for something else? So we're back here in our browser. Now the first thing that we're going to do is to create a meta object definition before creating the meta object setting. But if you already have meta object definitions, that is okay. But since I don't have, I'll just show you how to do it from scratch, okay? So let's create a new meta object definition. There are two ways to access them. Here in the content page, you have the add definition button here if you don't have a meta object definition, or you can access it through the settings and it should be under the custom data, which is this one. You can scroll down and you should be able to define your first meta object here. So let's do that. I'll create a new definition and we'll call it subscribers because I love you guys. You can just subscribe to the channel if you wanna be part of this meta object definition. Jokes aside, let's continue. Now the next thing we're going to do is to create the fields. So what are the fields that you want to apply to this meta object definition? It could be the name of the subscriber. It could be the age of the subscriber. It could be their information like, I don't know, bio or a description about them favorite color, where they came from, etc. Okay, so let's just make this simple. I'll add a new field and I'll just use a single line text and this is going to be their name. So we'll just give it a name and for the description, we'll just leave it empty. I don't think we need to put anything else here. So we'll just click add and the second one would be their age perhaps. So let's just add an integer and then we'll call this age. And notice here that we have a key, subscribers.h. We're gonna need this specifically, this one here, in the meta object setting, okay? So keep that in mind. And we'll just click add, we don't need to change anything else, and that's pretty much it. We don't need to change anything here in the options, so let's just click save. And now we have our meta object definition. Now the next thing we're going to do is to add entries. So let's just click the start adding entries. And for this new subscriber, we'll just call him Bernard Polidario, and then my age is 28 years old. Click save. And now we have our first entry. We can add another one. It could be John Doe. His age is 59 or 89. Click save. And now we have two entries for the subscriber's meta object definition. Now we have our meta object definition. We also have our entries. But the next thing we're going to do is to create the meta object setting, okay? So let's go back to the online store. 
and here in the themes we will edit our Shopify theme so let's just click edit code and now here we can do this in different ways you can do this in the sections or we can do this in a block so let's create a new block and we'll call this one subscriber click done and here in the block name we'll just change this to subscriber and then for the setting this is where we're going to implement our meta object setting so for the type we'll set this to meta object this one and the next one is the id of the setting we'll set it to subscriber underscore meta and for the label we just give it a subscriber and lastly the most important part is the meta object type earlier i mentioned that we need to keep in mind the key remember there is the subscribers dot name and the subscribers dot age we need the first part of that key which is the subscribers so we'll just put here subscribers okay make sure that whatever you have there is the same here in the meta object type so let's just go back to our definition just to double check so i'll go here in the content and then i'll open the subscribers meta object and then i'll click the manage definition so here notice that there's the type here this is what we need specifically okay so subscribers and then go back here in the meta object type make sure that it's subscribers awesome so now we're done here in the settings next is the preset so we'll just give it a preset and then we'll give this a new object and we'll give it a name of subscriber there we go click save and now we can start using this by doing the same thing in the section we added the content for blocks and the schema we added the blocks that will allow us to accept theme blocks and app blocks so we'll do the same thing here in the section we're going to open a section just an example perhaps we can do it here in the multi column but i highly doubt we can do it here because there's already blocks here i assume let's scroll down yeah there's already blocks here so since this already exists we can't do that to create the app blocks and theme blocks there should not be an object in the blocks so let's just skip that and maybe we can do it somewhere else maybe let's just do it in the custom liquid as well i think it's fine so here we just create the same blocks and then we'll add the type theme and then another one for the app blocks there you go and now we can do the same thing inside of the div we want to display what's inside of those theme blocks okay so let's create a new div and make sure that we close it like so and then we'll just use here the tag content for blocks and that's pretty much it we can save this but hold on i don't think we are using the subscriber meta object so going back here in the subscriber that liquid we're going to output a div will just display here the block dot settings dot subscriber meta and then the name of the subscriber so it should be name we can also do the same thing for the age so underneath of this we'll do the same block dot settings dot subscriber meta dot age now if we save this if we go back to our online store page and then customize this shopify theme we should be able to add a new section and use the custom liquid and we should be able to add a new block and it should be subscriber and then here we can select a meta object entry so now if we click the select button we should have here my name and then john doe so if i click my name it should display my name and then my age and that's it for this video once again what are the updates that you are super happy about let me know in the comments below now this video is honestly supposed to be uploaded alongside the my goals for 2025 video and speaking of that video 
I hope you guys have time to watch it because that video is very special for me and I hope you guys will have time to watch the entire thing. I really, really enjoyed working on that project. So I hope you guys will get to appreciate it too. So yeah, I'm super happy how it turns out. I'm looking forward to what I'm about to do next. I'm looking forward to release the film that I was talking about, the vlogs that I want to make and so on. So I hope you guys will look forward to that as well. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe and like this video if you haven't yet. And if you have any questions related to this video, let me know in the comments below. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.